Hello everyone and welcome back to Bookhaven with me Kim and my favorite little reader Lucky. Stick around for this month's book haul and a special giveaway. <laughs> Today I'll be doing my book haul for the month of December. Uh, I've gotten a number of books from various places. Some of them have been early Christmas gifts and some of them were off book outlet and a couple from my favorite bookstore chapters, Inigo. As we get into the video, you're going to see there's a lot of books where I'm going to say, I don't remember what this is about. I don't know much about this book. I've had many books on my TBR for a long time and when I do see them come up for a really good price on book outlet, I get excited and I go ahead and buy them for like two or three or four dollars. Sometimes I feel a little guilty about that because I know there are a lot of bookstores closing down and if I'm buying them off places like Book Outlet, I'm not supporting the bookstore. So what do you guys think about that? How do you do your book buying and, and feel good about it? You know where to comment. I'd love to know. Okay, so this month I've got a combination of YA, you know, young adult, I've got some adult fantasy, some nonfiction, some middle grade, and of course there's that mystery book giveaway that you'll hear about, but you've got to stick around till the end. I'll start off by showing you my middle grade books that I got off of Book Outlet this month. First is Bob by Wendy Mass and Rebecca Stead, and that is illustrated by Nicholas Gannon. Now this is a book that I've just heard wonderful things about online and on booktube. It's supposed to be a, a, just a really heartwarming story of this young girl, Livy, going home to visit her grandmother in Australia and she hasn't been there for years and she's feeling like she forgot something really important. And for those five years, that thing that she's forgotten is her imaginary friend who's been living in the closet because she told him to stay there and not to come out ever since her last visit. And he's waiting for Livy to come back because she made a promise before she left that she would help him really find his way back home and where he's from. So she comes back and I believe this is about the story of her keeping her promise and finding her imaginary friend again. He's a very odd looking creature, something something zombie like about him. Anyways, I'm very curious to take a look through this and see if it might be something that I'd like to share with my nieces or even my son because there's some pictures on it. Uh, it might make a good nighttime read. Then we have two books. I don't know if this is a duology or a series or a trilogy, I'm not quite sure. So if you've read these, let me know because I really didn't know nothing about them. I just saw the covers and thought, oh my god, this looks like so much fun. Initially, I even thought it was a graphic novel. I didn't know that it was a novel, but it looked very fantastic and a little bit of space thrown in there with it. The first one's called The Search for Wandla, and that's by Tony Dittrelizzi. second one is A Hero for Wandla, again by Tony Dittrelizzi. I know this is about a girl fleeing for her life, has something to do with a robot and an adult and the word Wandla and I don't want to read the second one because it might spoil the first one since I know th nothing about it. But it's got some really neat little illustrations in it. Most of them are at the beginning of a chapter. You can see, sorry it's a little crooked. I just love the art style and I have a feeling that the story is going to be really good. But if any of you have read the, any of these books in the series or from this author, let me know what you thought. Okay, in the young adult category, I picked up three books from all from Book Outlet again. The first one is The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. And I've heard amazing reviews about this. I know this was supposed to be some pretty hard-hitting content about uh, maybe murder and rape. It's been a while since I've read anything hard-hitting. I've been reading just a lot of epic fantasies lately, so it'll be nice to switch it up and I'm really interested to see how they bring about the message in this book. The next I've got Wild Beauty by Anna Marie McLemore. This author has uh, almost like cult following. People love her and love her works and I've never read anything by her before but this cover caught my eye and it was in one of the book subscription boxes that I really trust the books they choose to put out each month. 
I believe it's magic realism and has to do with an all-female family and they have some sort of dark and quite sad legacy, I believe, that maybe ties in with love. Hopefully I'll make my way to discovering this author in the near future. Last in my YA category off book outlet, I have Dare Mighty Things. This is another book I heard about um, through looking through the past books from one of my favorite subscription boxes. And I believe this is about a competition. The main character's name is Cassandra, and she wants to go to space, but she has to compete in a, a very harrowing um, competition to be able to go on this trip. And that's all I know about it. This is by Heather Kaczynski. If you've read this, let me know what you think. I don't typically read things that have like a, an outer space um, sci-fi kind of twist to it. Love competition, sounds kind of Hunger Games like. Um, so let me know if you've read this and you think I'll like it or leave it. Now I have three books that I believe fall into the adult category. They're all fantasy. First off I have a book that I've had on my TBR for a long time. I couldn't even remember what it was about but when I saw it for two dollars I snatched that right up and that is A Leaf the Unseen by G. Willow Wilson. Think Harry Potter meets Al Jazeera. Wilson's ability to construct a fantastical setting in the gin world and tense action scenes all the while peppering her pages with witty dialogue begs for this novel to be adapted to the movies. Now it's by the Winnipeg Free Press, yay Canada. A Leaf I believe is a super hacker and he might have from my understanding, um, created something evil that he and his childhood friend try and take down. It takes place in the world of Jin. There's an ancient book, there's technology, there's fantastical elements to it, and it takes place in an unnamed Gulf state. So that's a little bit different than most things that I've read so far. So I'm really excited to take a look at this and hopefully it makes it to my January TBR. So if any of you have heard anything about this without spoilers, definitely let me know because I actually haven't talked to anyone or know anyone who's read this. So that's Leaf the Unseen. I'll save the most unique one for last, but next we have Anthony Ryan's The Waking Fire. Now this is in some sort of series because it says book one of the Draconis Memoria. I know this has to do with dragons. I do love a good dragon fantasy. Um, oh, and this is what draw me in. Yes, so at the top it says, The Waking Fire is part Indiana Jones. I'm obsessed with everything Indiana Jones. Um, part Pirates of the Caribbean and part Mistborn, which I haven't read anything by Brandon Sanderson yet. I have Mistborn, but I haven't started it. I'm pretty sure I'll love it though. It's got a wonderful, memorable characters and great action. I love it. And Django Wexler wrote that. Um, and just that description alone drives me in. Indiana Jones, dragons, fantasy. What else do you need? Now, last on my fantasy uh, book selection is a really unique book that caught my eye when I was going through Book Outlet. And that is The Explorer's Guild volume one, but I don't believe volume there was ever a volume two ever made. And that's by John Baird and Kevin Costner. You may know that name. Uh, illustrated also by Rick Ross. This is a book, I guess it kind of reminds me a little bit about the Wandla books I got that are more um, middle grade, but I think this one is supposed to be for adults. And it's a combination of seemingly graphic novel or, or almost like in the style of comic book and regular novels. I'll show you some of the art in it. Let's see if I can find a good example. So there's a lot, a lot of that kind of art in it. Um, quite a bit of reading. And then also it just goes into your regular novel. I'm actually having a hard time finding some of the writing. Here we go. So let's see, like, you know, just your regular novel, but it's such a beautiful book and the pages are all meant to look aged. 
you know, like in back in grade school when you might have had an assignment where you had to take tea bags and, and make something look like it was uh, from a pirate ship or something very, very old. All the pages look that way. It's probably hard to see on the camera. But that just drew my attention because I haven't seen many books like that. And I love anything that has to do with exploring around the world adventure. Um, and it says that this is about a gentleman's club that operates a more mysterious organization, the Explorers Guild. And they go and journey around the world and they're on a quest to find Shambhala, the golden city of Buddhist myth. Anyways, it says it goes to the Mongolian deserts, through the underground canals of Asia, to the Himalayas, which I'll read anything that takes place in the Himalayas. Um, and this is all supposed to be taking place around World War I. So, I don't know how it'll be. I didn't look up to see what reviews were or anything, but uh, I thought seeing that Kevin Costner took part in the writing of this novel and just the unique format of, like, graphic novel and and your normal novel just really, really caught my eye. And the illustrations are quite beautiful. Um, some of them are quite intricate. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. But again, if anyone's read this, I'd love to hear from you. And last but not least, I've got my nonfiction collection. I picked up three books. Now, one of these was from Book Outlet, and the other two were from Chapters, which is one of my favorite bookstores to go to and hang out all day if I can. I mentioned in a previous video, I wish there were 24 hour bookstores. I would live there. My family would probably never see me or we would all live there. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, but anyways, the staff know me by name now, which is a little embarrassing. Um, but I do like to support my local bookstores and this great Canadian chain. So first I've got nonfiction called The Soul of an Octopus, a surprising exploration into the wonder of consciousness. And this is all about octopuses. Um, one of the reasons I was drawn to this is because my son has been absolutely obsessed with reading everything and looking at pictures of octopuses. And I had no idea how interesting they were, how intelligent they are, how much personality they have. And this is a book about a naturalist, the, the author actually, I believe it's Cy Montgomery. And she works with them. She's worked with octopuses her entire life. And there's just a lot of information about her findings and just how unique these creatures are. So I picked that up and I'm very curious to learn more things and share that with my son. Then we've got Educated by Tara Westover. Now this is a book that's getting a lot of hype. I believe a lot of book clubs have this on their list this year or, or have it coming up. This is a story about the author and her life and her experiences growing up in a Mormon community that was very isolated. No one was allowed to go see doctors for medical help. They, the kids weren't allowed to go to school. It was all about survivalism and just staying for themselves. So she grew up this way and eventually, I think when she was 17, Tara ended up going to school and she just kept going from there. She went to Harvard and Cambridge, learned about things like the, the Holocaust for the first time, and really just had her eyes open up to the world. And so she tells the story about the, the contrast and, and growing up in that environment and then going on to, to be quite an amazing um, professional and just having all these experiences. So it's supposed to be great. I've perused a few pages, read a few paragraphs, and really like the writing style. And for my last book that's a nonfiction, this is something I came upon and I can't believe that I'd never heard of it before because although you see me reading a lot of YA and a lot of fantasy, some of my favorite things to read are nonfiction about explorers and if it has anything to do with animals, I'm absolutely animal obsessed. So this book is Adventures of a Young Naturalist by David Attenborough, and this is the Zoo Quest Expedition. So this is a gentleman that has worked for, I believe he's worked for National Geographic. He's been the, the creative mind behind documentaries like Planet Earth, Blue, Blue Planet, and he's been working for television crews and BBC since 1954, going out and been responsible bringing animals back for the zoo, which that I'm, that's, I'm not a big fan, but um, he does tell about all his adventures going trekking 
in Guyana and in Indonesia and in Paraguay and probably tells us about some of the lessons he's learned um, coming into contact with some of these more unique creatures and with indigenous tribes. There's also a nice mix of um, photographs throughout the book. Everything's in black and white, but for example, here's one when they're on their way to a volcano in East Java. So you can kind of just imagine some of the things that he saw in all these years going around the world. Lots of animal pictures for sure as well. We've got a three-toed sloth and a ant eater here. So even though I know it seems like I'm YA and fantasy obsessed, this is probably my most anticipated read of the year and I'm very, very excited to learn all about this man and his career working with animals and television and just exploring uh, far corners of our world. All right, if you've stuck around till now, you know that I also mentioned that I'm doing a book giveaway this month, and that is for Heartless by Marissa Meyer. I've never actually read anything by this author. It's not typically a part of the YA or fantasy genre that I gravitate to, but I know people love the Lunar Chronicles. If you don't know what it's about, I believe it takes place in Wonderland and there's the main character, Catherine. She just wants to do her own thing making pastries, but I believe the king has an interest in her. And of course, her, her mother would be like, marrying a king is probably a better life for you fair daughter than baking pastries all your life. Uh, so there's something to do with, with the king and some gathering. Uh, where she's there to meet the king, she actually falls in love or finds an interest in someone that she was not expecting to. So again, this takes place in Wonderland, and I'll be giving this away on December 20th. Um, I'm randomly going to choose someone in the comments. If you like the video and subscribe and comment down below um, letting me know what book has taken you out of your comfort zone or out of the, the genres that you normally go towards and read. So until then, let me know about your experiences with getting out of your comfort zone. And on December 20th, I'll be letting you know who wins this book. So thanks again for joining me on Bookhaven for my December book haul and surprise giveaway. If you like what you heard or you saw, be sure to click like and subscribe. And any questions or comments, down below. I'd love to hear from you. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.